So in this video, we're going to be looking at classifying organic compounds. We're going to look at some basic organic chemistry, as well as how we can actually define different categories for organic compounds itself. Now, starting off, organic chemistry is just a subdiscipline of chemistry, where we've got, of course, this subcategory that involves loads of these molecules, millions of these molecules that involve the carbon atom. Now, of course, organic chemistry involves other atoms as well, but carbon-based compounds is going to be the focus. And we look at the reactivity, we look at synthesis pathways, how we can actually make different types of molecules, different types of compounds from a starting material. And we're also going to look at the reaction mechanisms that take place as well. Now, the first term that we're going to look at is, of course, hydrocarbons. Now, hydrocarbons are compounds that consist of carbon and hydrogen atoms only. And the key word here to mention in the exam is going to be only. Now, when we come across a hydrocarbon, right, we say, of course, something like methane, which has a formula of CH4, is going to be a hydrocarbon. But then something like ethanol, which has a formula of C2, H5OH that is not going to be a hydrocarbon because it's got an oxygen atom in there. It does not consist of carbon and hydrogen atoms only. Now there's two more ways that we can actually classify an organic compound such as a hydrocarbon and we can actually classify it as being saturated or unsaturated. Now a saturated compound contains no CC double bond and a unsaturated compound contains a CC double bond itself. Now you've got ethane and you've got ethene here as your two examples. In ethane you can see that's going to be of course saturated because it contains only carbon carbon single bonds there's no carbon carbon double or multiple bonds if i were to look at something like ethene because we've got here a carbon carbon double bond in ethene we know the functional group for this alkene is going to be that carbon carbon double bond all of our alkenes and so ethene we say that they're going to be unsaturated now another unfamiliar example that's come up which isn't actually on the spec but the examiners ask about it is our alkynes right so we've looked at alkenes alkenes what about our alkynes well alkynes they have carbon carbon triple bonds and these we can actually classify them as being unsaturated as well and so there is another example over here and we actually call this ethine itself so yeah there's our three definitions that we need to know that we need to remember from gcse what about our more a level examples then well this comes about the arrangement of our carbon atoms for the first two and the third one is a bit different and you look at that more when you deal with advanced a level chemistry now depending upon how our carbon atoms are arranged we can define them as being an aliphatic compound or an alicyclic compound now an aliphatic compound is when the carbon atoms they're going to be arranged together to form a straight chain structure and that can be either branched or unbranched and an alicyclic compound is where the carbon atoms they're going to be arranged together in a ring structure instead so it's not going to be a chain but again this can be unbranched or branched now to make this a bit more clear you can see i've got two structures at the bottom over here i've got butane and i've got cyclobutane butane you can see it's got one two three four carbon atoms and they're arranged in a straight chain we call this an aliphatic compound if we were to look at cyclobutane you can see in the next example over here i've got four carbon atoms again but in this case you can see that they're arranged where one end is stuck to the other end we've got an alicyclic compound it's a ring structure so yeah there's a difference between an aliphatic compound and an alicyclic compound what about an aromatic compound then well an aromatic compound is a compound that contains a benzene ring which actually has a special type of chemistry and you can delve into that and you can get loads of different types of aromatic compounds but you deal with that mainly in year two we just need to know what an aromatic compound is and you can see here that of course i've got methyl benzene which is also called toluene and it has the following structure here we say that this one is going to be an aromatic compound because it contains a benzene ring so now if we were to look at our next type of classification we can actually assign different compounds to different categories and we call each of these homologous series and each of these homologous series they will have a functional group to make it part of that category if we were to look at something like an alkane that that just contains simple carbon carbon single bonds alkenes it contains the carbon carbon double bond and then if you were to look at haloalkanes they contain of course the corresponding halogen to make of course a fluoroalkane you'd need fluorine chloroalkanes need chlorine bromoalkanes need bromine and iodoalkanes they need iodine now when it comes to the naming conventions we normally use of course something called a prefix which is a starting bit the suffix which is the ending bit and in between these two we actually have something called called the stem and the stem is dependent upon the number of carbon atoms you've got now the stem is basically going to be based on how many carbon atoms you've got where one is going to be meth two is going to be eth three is going to be prop and then four is going to be bute 
They're the four examples you've had to learn at GCSE. But at A level, right, we go all the way up to 10, but we'll look at this in a bit more detail. Now, if we were to look at alkanes, right, they don't really have a prefix, uh, but instead they're going to end in just N. There are kind of box standard vanilla kind of molecules. If I were to look at alkenes, right, rather than ending in N, we would end it in ene. If we were to look at haloalkanes, we would end it in ane still because it's going to be an alkane with a halogen attached, but the starting bit would include fluoro, chloro, bromo, and iodo as well. Now, if we were to look at examples for an alkane, I've got propane, ends in ane. For an alkene, I've got prop, one ene, right? I've got here an ene suffix, so I know it's going to be an alkane. And then, of course, I've got one, and then I've got fluoro, bromo, chloro, and iodo propane. Here, I've got four examples of of my actual halo alkanes themselves. So moving on to some more examples that you might have come across at GCSE, but in most cases, if you don't combine science, you might not have. Uh, if we were to look at the following four, we've got alcohols, aldehydes, ketones, and carboxylic acids. Now alcohols, you've come across an example like ethanol plenty of times as a solvent in other parts of chemistry, but alcohols, we normally end them in all. So to recognize that we've got an alcohol, normally it will end in something like all. In some cases, you might have to use a hydro prefix but in most cases they actually just end in O. Now when we look at aldehydes right that's when we've got a carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in one functional group. We've got a carbon that's going to be double bonded to an oxygen over here and it's going to be at the end of the chain where you've got of course a hydrogen on one side and the rest of the carbon chain on another and then a ketone is going to be the same carbon oxygen double bond but it's not going to be at the end of the chain. You can see over here I've got a carbon oxygen double bond but I've got a carbon attached at either side itself. Now, if we were to look at how these end in terms of their names, their suffixes, an aldehyde, it will end in anal, and a ketone will end in own. Now, carboxylic acids, you've already come across them before in their structure, but of course, you can get loads of different types of carboxylic acids, not just a familiar one that you've come across since year seven, which is going to be ethanoic acid. Now, in terms of the functional group, you've got here carbon double bonded to an oxygen, but you've also got that same carbon atom bonded to an OH, and together, that's what makes a carboxylic acid a functional group itself. Now, of course, it's got three carbon atoms, and it's got a carboxylic acid group. We would call this one propanoic acid. Acid. In the case over here where we've got a carbon that's going to be double bonded to an oxygen that's not at the end, we call that a ketone that's going to be propan 2 on. I ignore the numbers for now, uh, but we'll just focus on the suffix and the prefix. If we were to look at an aldehyde, right, where we've got the carbon oxygen double bond at the end of the chain, then we would say, of course, we've got a aldehyde, so this is going to be propanal. And then in the case where we've got just an OH on its own attached to a carbon atom, but there's no carbon oxygen double bond on the same carbon atom then we would say of course we've got alcohol so we've got propan 1 in this case and there is our more complicated functional groups you'll come across many more uh, like uh, your amines your esters and so on but of course that's for another time now moving on, I've got a task for you to do. I want you to label the different types of functional groups that are present in the following compounds. Feel free to pause the video, resume once you're ready to go over the answers. So starting off with the first one, you can see over here that I've got a carbon-carbon double bond straight away. It kind of stands out. And we say that we've actually got an alkene functional group itself. We can actually say that this is going to be unsaturated. It's also going to be a hydrocarbon as well, but that's not what the question's asking for. We're just identifying functional groups for now. Looking at B, we've got here an alcohol because we've got carbon bonded to an OH. So in that case, we can say that this compound is going to be an alcohol. And so there's that one done. Look at C we've got carbon double bonded to an oxygen it's going to be at the end it's not going to be an aldehyde it's actually going to be a carboxylic acid and so we know that over here right our functional group is going to be called a carboxylic acid to be more specific we would actually call this a pentanoic acid molecule itself because we've got one two three four five carbon atoms so yeah there's that one done looking at the next one we've got here carbon oxygen double bond it's going to be at the end of the actual chain so we know of course we don't have here carboxylic acid but in actual fact we have here a aldehyde it's not going to be a ketone because that carbon oxygen double bond is at the end of the actual chain itself if we were to look at the next one though right the carbon oxygen double bond is no longer at the end of the chain and so we can say that this is going to be a ketone because it's somewhere in the middle right so there's that one done looking at the last one then this one's really complicated you can actually have more than one functional group in a molecule 
most organic compounds do. Starting off, we've got here from right to left, we've got here carboxylic acid functional group. We've also got here a carbon chlorine bond, so we know it's going to be a chloroalkane. And then we've also got a carbon bonded to an oxygen and a hydrogen there as well. So we know, of course, we've got here a alcohol group as well. Now, if you were to look at the bottom, we've actually got CH3, which isn't a functional group, but we say that's more of a branch, right? Because it's just a methyl group is what we say, an alkyl group, something that's hanging off from the main chain itself. And there's that one done as well. So moving on, we know what functional groups are. They're just parts of molecules that are responsible for its reactivity. And of course, we've categorized this into different kinds of organic compounds that we can get like alcohols, aldehydes and ketones. But there's two more key terms that we need to be aware of. One of them is general formula, which you've probably come across already at GCSE. We say this is the simplest algebraic formula of a member of a homologous series. And a good example of one that you've seen before is alkanes, where you can see here you've got CN, H, H2N plus 2 and you can actually use this to find out how many hydrogen atoms you have if you were to look at a certain number of carbon atoms. If I were to look at having 15 carbon atoms where I've got C15, in terms of the hydrogen atoms I would just have double the amount plus 2 so I end up with C15 and then it's going to be H15 times by 2 that's 30, add 2 that's going to be H32 itself and we would actually call this pentadecane. If you were to look at another general formula that you've come across before, a good example is for alkenes, where you've got CN, H2N itself as well. But we'll come across these when we deal with them in their relevant topics. If we were to look at homologous series, that's another definition that you need to know. And we define this as a series of organic compounds with the same functional group, but with each successive member differing by CH2 itself. Now we've already come across different functional groups like our alkenes. And we've said, of course, if you've got two carbon carbon atoms you can get something like ethene that was an example that we looked at but the thing is if we were to look at the alkenes homologous series we can actually extend the length of the carbon chain and we can end up with ethene propene butene pentene and so on now of course all of these their stem is now going to change because remember we talked about this idea of having a stem in between our suffix and our prefix right remember the prefix goes at the start the suffix goes at the end the stem tells you about how many different carbon atoms you've got whereas the prefix and the suffix they tell you about the functional group now in terms of the stem right we normally say of course if i've got one carbon atom we would say that we've got meth for two carbon atoms, F3 is prop, 4 is bute, and then uh, 5 is going to be pent. The first four is what you've come across at GCSE, and you remembered it by saying monkeys eat peeled bananas probably, but the next few are ones that you need to know for A-level. So yeah, we've got five for pent, and then we've got hex, that's going to be six, hept, that's going to be seven, oct, that's going to be eight. You can kind of see the pattern here. Nine is going to be none, and then 10 is going to be dec. Now, I know all of these are going to be alkanes. They're all going to be part of the same homologous series because they all end in ane. That's the suffix part of it. And if we were to look at the four formula of our alkanes right how we know that they're part of the same homologous series is that each one of them they're going to differ by ch2 every time so if we were to add ch2 onto methane we end up with ethane if we were to add ch2 onto heptane we would end up with octane itself and that's how these fit the definition so in terms of our homologous series our alkanes homologous series we've looked at the name we've looked at the formula we've looked at the stem name but what about the term alkyl group well let's if I were to have a carbon chain which were to have one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms, it was five carbon atoms long. Well, if I were to add a branch to that, right, I would refer to that branch as an alkyl group. And that branch, we have to give it a name. If it contains one carbon atom, then we call it a methyl group. If it contains two carbon atoms, it's going to be ethyl, three, propyl, nine, nonyl. You kind of get the idea. Now, if we were to look at the formula of this alkyl group, right, because we need to have, of course, a bond between the carbon atom to our actual main stem itself we need to get rid of a hydrogen atom so it differs from the actual alkane by one hydrogen atom so to go from something like hexane to a hexyl group right what we would need to do is get rid of one hydrogen atom so that one of the carbon atoms can actually bond to the main chain so yeah we would call it in terms of the naming convention hexyl rather than hexane because of course we're looking at an alkyl group not an alkane anymore 
and that is how we can actually name different alkyl groups and how we can get the formula of our actual alkyl groups as well.